so it's called Monuments, Empire and Slavery and it runs until the 4th of September and it's really the first step in a really big um, re-evaluation of our monuments because as many people know we do have a lot of monuments in the Abbey and research over the last year has shown that a good proportion of them are connected to the colonies, the British Empire. So in the light of events that happened over the last year, the Black Lives Matter protests, the tragic murder of George Floyd, we've all been very committed to making that information publicly available. So the exhibition is the first step in that process. You aren't covering every memorial tablet in the Abbey. You're concentrating on three people, I understand. That's right, because we've had some wonderful work from our archive volunteers and our archivist, Anna Riggs, um, as well as Ollie Taylor, who is our head of interpretation. And what we found is there are fascinating histories and also, of course, very troubling histories. So we wanted to just keep the focus on the monuments, look at three individuals who are all connected to the empire in different ways. So um, one of them is a merchant, one of them is a, a gold hunter, and one of them was a trustee of a plantation in Barbados. So they all have slightly different connections, but it's really hopefully a way in for people to start to understand exactly the the, the breadth of influence that the Empire did have on our memorials. You've only just opened, but are, are people being shocked by the association? I mean, one, one doesn't think of Bath being associated with the slave trade. Well, that's right. And I think what's become clear with our research over the last year is how many connections there are. And that did surprise us. I mean, of about 1,500 um, war memorials and Legerstones, we have at least 200 that have connections with the colonies. So, for example, 72 to the West Indies, um, 25 mentions of Barbados, um, 12 mentions of Jamaica, 34 mentions of India and Bengal. And, and these are just the monuments that we can easily identify. There will be others as well as we continue with our research. This, of course, is, is a temporary exhibition. Are, are you looking for a more permanent way of letting people know of the association? Absolutely. So we've produced a leaflet um, of about, to cover about five or six further monuments. But what we're going to do is make sure all our research gets into the public domain so that people can look at it for themselves. Um, so that's definitely on our list of um, ambitions. And also we're working really closely with the Bath Record Office and the Bath Preservation Trust. We've got some funding from the National Archive and over the next six months we're going to research the Bath Chronicle. So it's quite particular search over 20 years between 1760 and 1780. We're looking at key words like Barbados, like sugar, and seeing what comes up. So what was known about at the time in Bath? What, what, what understanding was there of exactly the role that the colonies played in the wealth of Bath? And all of that will go on a website, so that's very exciting. Bath was also one of the centres where the abolitionists were active. Are you reflecting that as well? Yes, we do look um, in brief um, in the exhibition at the abolitionists and there's much more to say. Um, the Quakers were certainly very active. We know that Wilberforce came to stay. We know that William and Ellen Craft, who were escaped enslaved people, came to talk here. So there's a, again a whole wealth of information around the abolitionists which we would really like to continue to research and it's really nice that in Bath generally I think amongst other heritage organisations there's a real um, commitment and, and we're starting to network together on how we can continue to put all this information out there for people to um, you know, feel informed. There is a big simmering debate about what you do with this particular history. Can you erase it? Uh, in Bristol they Topple Colston statue. Uh, are you going to strip the walls of the Abbey of memorial plaques? No, we're not because very early on we set up an oversight group and obviously on that group uh, there are members of the clergy and congregations and staff but also we have members of the local um, black, Asian and minority ethnic community in Bath and it felt really important to give them a voice in the decisions that we were about to take and I went to visit the um, Bath Ethnic Minority Senior Citizens Association in Fairfield House and asked their opinion. And they all said, don't take them down, communicate them. So 
give people information, allow them to see for themselves. And it's really important to, for the truth to come out. And they wished that it had come out sooner, and we agree that it should have come out sooner. But what we're doing now is making it really clear in a very honest, transparent way for people to understand. The exhibition is reflecting the past. In any way, does it reflect the present and the future? Absolutely. So the thrust of the exhibition is uh, very much led by an introduction by Guy Bridgewater, who's our rector, and he um, unequivocally, unequivocally condemns slavery in any form, past, present or future. And he expresses deep regret that the church was involved at any stage because, of course, Bath Abbey did benefit financially at the time in the 18th, 19th centuries from those families paying to have monuments put on the walls to members of their, their family who had those colonial connections. So he um, wants us all to learn from the past, to reflect on the past, and we have two pieces of artwork by a local black artist called Manuel Akuri, um, as well as a commissioned poem by local artist Mark Delise. And both of those works really encourage us all to reflect on injustice today and how we can address it and work towards um, creating equality um, and learn from the past but move forward in a positive way.